And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Happy Thursday and happy World Penguin Day. You're kidding. Uh, to preserve it's what's true. left of their population, I suppose. Yeah, that's part of the reason why, yes. <laughs> Have you seen that meme of Benedict Cumberbatch unable to say the word penguin? Penguin. I, I can't even mimic yeah. it. It's, it's it's such an odd word that you he couldn't he couldn't pronounce even uh, to this day. Uh, you you think he's very you know. Um, he has fantastic diction. Good with his yeah, yeah with good diction, but uh, yeah, he struggled with the word penguin. I don't know if people have. Uh, if you heard haven't it. seen uh, it and you need something uplifting this morning, it's fantastic <laughs> because he had to do. <laughs> A nature documentary, right? That yeah. he narrated one. Yeah. 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 Penguin. <laughs> Very varying variations of the word penguin. It's very uh, <laughs> funny to watch. <laughs> All right, we digress. Let's jump into QR news this morning. We're gonna to try to clarify some of the major headlines for our listeners. Ooh, alphabet soup, lots of acronyms, your favorite. Okay, let's <laughs> yes. get started. Our first keyword of the day. Beginning of the swarm. Not so coincidentally, it, the acronym is BTS, Korea's first nanosatellite named Beginning of the Swarm, or BTS after the K-pop group has been successfully launched. What's the latest, Anna? Yes, uh, it is nicknamed or codenamed, if you will, <laughs> Beginning of the Swarm, uh, or BTS. Its official name is actually NeonSat1. Now, the launch project was named after, yes, BTS, uh, and it was actually by Rocket Lab, the uh, launch uh, provider, not the Korean government or CASA. Uh, now, the satellite was launched at 10.32 a.m. local time from a launch site in New Zealand on Rocket Lab's Electron rocket. About four hours later, the satellite's solar panels were successfully deployed, indicating stable power generation. Then successful two-way communication was also confirmed with the Sejong base in Antarctica. Uh, the Earth Observation Satellite is aimed at enhancing national security and and responding swiftly to disasters and emergencies as part of the nation's project to create a satellite cluster by the year 2027. This cluster will enable over three observations of the Korean Peninsula per day. It will begin its official Earth observation mission in November following a performance review. It's designed for lightness, cost efficiency, and low power consumption. It actually weighs less than 100 kilograms. It will provide black and white images with a resolution of one meter and color images of four meters from an altitude of about 500 kilometers over three years. Korea plans to launch five more such nano satellites into space uh, in June 2026 and five more in September 2027 as well. So, yes, uh, more um, compact satellites are uh, in addition to the successful kind of uh, string of successful launches of these satellites that Korea has been producing of late. All right. So with hefty plans to launch more satellites into space, um, we're talking about not just the private sector, right? It's the public sector and the military prowess. So uh, we're ready to launch CASA. And you say that without sweating anymore. Great. <laughs> yeah. I'm used to it now. <laughs> I know, right? We've all acclimated our second keyword of the day. New CASA chief. So President Yoon has appointed an aerospace professor at Seoul National University as the inaugural chief to oversee Korea's forthcoming space agency, ready to be launched at the end of May, right? So what's the plan mm -hmm. and what's the latest? Yes, yeah, so it is uh, Yoon Young-bin. He'll be spearheading the Korea Aerospace Administration, or CASA for short, slated for launch on May 27th. That's when it's going to begin its operations. The top office said Yoon is a leading researcher in Korea on space propulsion systems. Uh, he has participated in research on liquid rockets and gas turbine engines over the past 40 years. He has actually contributed to projects like the development of Korea's first domestically developed space rocket system, NARO. Uh, the president also appointed John Lee, a former senior executive at NASA, uh, interestingly, as the administration's deputy uh, administrator. Used, he is a Korean-American, so he actually has U.S. citizenship, mm -hmm. but he is uh, allowed to hold that role. He can't hold the 
chief for the uh, head uh, role, but he can serve in a senior executive position uh, now, uh, or deputy administrator in this case. Mm. He is a space expert with 30 years of experience in the field. He worked at the Goddard Space Flight Center, which is a major NASA space research lab as a senior executive until 2021. With his new position, he's actually poised to become the highest salaried Korean government official, excluding the president. Now, this follows President Yoon's order to offer uh, handsome salaries and other benefits to attract global space talent. Uh, meanwhile, Nog Young Won, a senior official at the Science Ministry, was named as CASA's deputy chief, nor was the director general in charge of launching NARO all the way back in 2013. He was also part of establishing CASA since last uh, September mm. while serving in the ministry. Now, the establishment of CASA fulfills one of President Yoon's campaign promises. The government aims to develop over 2,000 aerospace companies and generate half a million jobs through the establishment of the agency. The goal is, of course, to become one of the top five space powers globally by the year 2045. And it's certainly en route to becoming or achieving that goal with these mm. satellites, uh, successful satellite launches. All right. So it seems that because there will be last minute decisions and changes in the month of May, we'll keep close tabs on that front. And let's move on to our third keyword of the day. Med professors resign. So professors at medical schools throughout Korea have started to resign en masse, arguing that they have been pushed to their limits from overwork with trainee doctors on strike. Uh, well past the two-month point at this point, it, however, is being viewed as protesting government health care reforms, notably the expansion of medical school quotas. So they do see eye to eye with the doctors who have walked out. What's the latest? Right. So these professors, uh, having submitted collective resignations a month ago, are now legally free to leave their positions. Many have actually begun to do so, impacting major hospitals and medical schools nationwide. They did warn that they were going to be leaving from today. Now, despite the government's attempts to manage and minimize the situation, asserting that a few of the resignation notices have been formally processed, many professors are determined to leave their positions, citing the government's failure to engage with their demands. Now, this mass exit from hospitals is expected, of course, to disrupt hospital operations and patient care significantly. Uh, in response to the crisis, uh, the government has initiated the so-called Presidential Committee on Medical Reform, which is actually holding its first meeting uh, today. This committee aims to tackle several key healthcare issues, but is not expected to address the contentious issue of medical school quotas directly. Its objective includes uh, strengthening regional medical services, building a safety net for medical accidents, and improving how medical fees are compensated. Uh, however, major medical organizations have chosen not to participate in this committee. They argue its role and structure are not clearly defined and insist that discussions about the number of doctors should be handled directly with those uh, in the medical fields. Now, the situation, of course, poses a significant challenge to Korea's healthcare system, highlighting the deep divisions between the healthcare professionals and government policy makers as the new reform or medical reform committee begins its work it faces the critical task of bridging these gaps and addressing the systematic uh, systemic issues that have uh, led to this crisis uh, either side uh, of the arguments uh, standing pretty firm although the government has taken uh, half a step back if you will in mm. terms of kind of uh, adjusting that number 2,000 in terms of medical school uh, quotes, uh, quotas, but that is only for one year. It's mm. going to be sticking with that number for the years after that. The medical community wants it scrapped. Yeah. Uh, so the same arguments being repeated uh, as usual. More stalemate with possibly a medical vacuum that leaves a bigger hole with these professors ready to walk out. All right, let's move on to our fourth keyword of the day. Low birth rate. Another record breaker for this time of the year. The number of newborns in Korea sunk to another new low for the month of February. It also fell below 20,000 for the very first time in the first quarter. This is traditionally a peak period for births. Tell us the details. 
That's right. Uh, statistics uh, Korea data shows that Korea saw 19,362 birds in February. That's a 3.3% decrease from the same period last year. The crude birth rate, which is the average number of births per 1,000 population, came in at 4.8 children. That's down 0.3 on year. Uh, the number of newborns saw an online decline for the 17th consecutive month. Just 21,442 births were recorded in January. That was an on-year decrease of 7.7%. Now, five regions, including Seoul and Incheon, actually saw an increase in the number of newborns in February. But 12 regions, such as Busan and Tegu, experienced a decline. Now, as the number of deaths nationwide spiked also 9.6% to just under 30,000, Korea's population shrank by a net of 10,614. That is 52 straight months of net population decline. Now, furthermore, despite a temporary rise in January marriages due to favorable policies, the optimism was short-lived as February witnessed another drop. The rate decreased by 5% from the previous year, excluding the pandemic years, hitting a record low. Now, this de uh, decrease in marriages suggests the low birth rate trend is likely to continue. Uh, the country's fertility rate, which measures the average number of children a woman is expected to have, is projected to fall further, having already reached a record low of 0.72 in the previous year. That's well below the OECD average. Now, in response to the ongoing crisis, the government is conducting a national survey to assess public opinion on offering substantial cash incentives for childbirth, revisiting a controversial proposal from the 2007 presidential election. So it just goes to show how long this issue has been mm. going on for. I mean, uh, measures um, and policies were started to uh, come out in 2007. So it's been a while. Simultaneously, a comprehensive review of current measures against the low birth rate is underway to enhance effective policies and also reconsider less successful ones. So it's... Uh, mm. A tough one. Uh, a lot of cash incentives certainly has been one of the uh, or one of the possible solutions. It doesn't right. seem to be working that much. Uh, so, yeah, I think it goes to show that there's a lot of underlying issues at hand when trying to fix the low birth rate issue. But it is a chronic one mm. that is hampering uh, Korea's economic kind of potential in the uh foreseeable future. Uh, we could dwell on this topic for hours. I mean, it does affect our age group, doesn't it, where we have to make important life-changing decisions for our families and our friends fa face similar decision-making. And it's tough because based on the surveys I've seen, it seems that most young couples, newlyweds and not, are, are having a tough time feeling any of these sort of promises uh, to alleviate a uh, childbirth burden on young couples, yeah. um, despite the government effort, that is. We have to feel the change, right? Yeah, I mean, this uh, whole demographic kind of uh, crisis, if you will, is uh, kind of being embedded in kind of uh, social aspects as well now. I mean, uh, I'm hearing from uh, couples or uh, say that uh, if, you're, if you're having children, then you're considered a patriot. I mean, I mean that's, <laughs> so it goes yeah. to show that... The rarity, uh, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a widespread issue, uh, one that is... Uh, fully uh, one that a lot of people are fully aware of. It's just a matter of how mm. uh, this issue is going to be resolved, if ever. Mm. So until then, even if we sound like a broken record, we have to give the updates. All right, let's move on to our final keyword of the day. Lower tariffs. So the current government is acting to control rising prices of various food items, especially cabbage, kale, dried seaweed, by implementing lower import tariffs. I'm assuming that we rely a great deal on cabbage imports. Tell us more. Yeah, so this initiative was announced by Finance Minister Cho Tang Wok at a recent meeting focused on stabilizing prices. He emphasized the urgency for all departments of the government to work together to achieve a stable inflation rate of around 2%. Uh, this decision comes in response to the continuing high prices of agricultural uh, livestock and seafood products. Uh, the government plans to reduce tariffs on five agricultural products, currently seeing significant price increases. Uh, cabbage, kale, carrots, grapes and dried seaweed are among them uh, starting next month to help reduce prices quickly. 
In addition to these goods, the government will also apply lower tariffs to cocoa beans and seasoned seaweed in the processed food sector. Now, to further aid price stability, the government will support the wholesale prices of 25 specific items, including tomatoes and carrots, and will distribute reserves of six popular types of seafood, such as pollock and mackerel, within this month. Uh, the finance ministry has asked the food industry to actually pass on any reductions in raw material costs to consumers through lower product prices. There's been some criticism saying that even though there have been some decreases in the initial costs of uh, food, they haven't been... Um, applied to the final price. Now, they are also monitoring all prices as well to prevent excessive increases and are actively managing for prices, insure, including ensuring that budget-friendly uh, gas stations maintain prices 30 to 41 lower uh, than average. The Fair Trade Commission, on its part, will also strengthen its role in monitoring the market, swiftly investigating any suspected cases of collusion to maintain fair competition and price stability across various sectors. Thank you very much, Adam, for today's coverage. Uh, not so coincidentally, Kimpa franchises are looking at raising its prices. I mean, you said seaweed prices are higher, right? So maybe that has yeah. something to do with it. Something that's meant to be cheap and cheerful, not so much cheap, but maybe still <laughs> cheerful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Adam, for today's coverage. We'll see, speak to you again tomorrow. <laughs> You're very welcome. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.